Between the kids being home and hosting, everything in our house gets used up in summer. With Instacart, I can save money by stocking up on all my favorite summer brands. I save time by getting everything delivered in as fast as an hour. And I save myself a sink full of dirty dishes by stocking up on paper plates for the annual summer cookout. Save more on summer essentials? Spend more time enjoying summer. Add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Conn Report wherever you get your podcast you're watching on YouTube. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. And don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I have a story up now about, about Chase Young coming back. I'm going to get to that in a minute. And then I'm going to have a story up on Saturday about the play of the defensive line and just obviously they are very good and the big key moving forward. So there you go. That'll be up on ESPN.com. And in a few minutes, I will get to my keys and a prediction to the game. But let's start with the news on Friday that Chase Young will be back. His do- The doctors have cleared him for contact in a game last week on Friday. When Well, actually it was Saturday. They, he had the MRI Friday. The doctors read it the next day, gave him the news that he was cleared for contact in practice, so a controlled contact setting, but not yet for a game. At that time, we were told that it was likely that it would be week three for Young to return. However, what that really did was kind of temper down the expectation for Young this week, let it progress naturally. If he was able to play, then they could clear me to play, and it wouldn't look, you know, it wouldn't certainly. The, the expectation, again, was week three with a chance at week two, but they weren't sure. So they didn't even want to put that really out there because they needed to see how he got through Wednesday. And I think they know and he knows that everybody has been waiting for him to get back out there, even though it's only been one game. It's been a month, more than a month with this. So anyway, he's back. He will be on a, on a snap count. Now, they said that last year when he came back against San Francisco as well off the knee, different situation, but still they said it'd be a snap count. And then when he got out there, they saw that he was progress, that he was doing better than I think they had, than they thought he might be. So you, you start off the snap count, but if you're seeing what you need to see and he's doing okay, then you extend that snap count. So there was no number given, but they will be very mindful of it. And it's a big return for this defense. I mean, the line was really, really good last week. You know that. This line has been good without him over the last year because they have such really good depth and their tackles are phenomenal. And then you have Montez Sweat off to a good start. But I think it's also the key is guys like James Smith, James Smith Williams, Casey Tuhill, those guys came in and have handled their job and do, you know, do what they need him to do, which is be a contributing player off the bench. And when F.A. Obata is back, it just adds to it. So, they're in a good spot. Now, obviously, Andre Jones, a rookie last played last week, gave up one big play, and I only saw him one play after that. At first, I didn't think he played. I think it was one more. But what the point, the bottom line is they're in a good shape, they're in good position now. And Young did look good before the neck injury in the first preseason game against Cleveland. And and obviously the the looking good means coming off the line, being explosive. Jeff. Uh, Scanina, their defensive line coach, said he looked more explosive early in camp than he was certainly at the end of last year. No more brace, all that. So what will he add? Well, we'll have to wait and see. He did Again, he did look better. And I think a big key for him is getting rid of those stutter step rushes. You're going to see sometimes of that guys do that. The key for him is if it's boom, boom and go right versus boom, boom, boom then go. Cause once he starts kind of dancing with them, he loses all power and he loses his strength and you know, the strength of his game. And so that's going to be something to watch, but it will certainly be an emotional return for him and, a, and an emotional boost for a defense that played really well last week, albeit against a, a not very good offense, but I also think they did what they should do, which is dominate the game. So he's back. Curtis Samuel receiver, Curtis Samuel is, 
has a hip injury, was limited in practice the last couple of days, but he's not, but he is going to play. So there's no doubt about him. The other one who for sure is out is, is defensive back Quan Martin suffered a concussion in the opener. So he will not play. So, all right. So let's get to my prediction, excuse me, the keys to the game. This is going to be a tough, tough game, I think, for both teams. And I think it's why it's going to be an interesting one to watch because I, I think there's some similarities with these groups as far as where they're at with their offense and with the def- their respective defenses. So to me, it's going to come down. This is I'm not getting to my keys yet, but turnovers are the key every game. I had this stat last week that Washington is 5-20 and 20 under Rivera when they lose the turnover battle. So – that right there is always going to be the key. So to win that battle, let's get to my first key. One, handle the pressure. Not the pressure of the game, the pressure of the pass rush for Denver or the pressure of what the defense is going to try and do against a protection unit, an offense that gave up six sacks and a quarterback that's making his first road start and only his third start. Now, the road start, Howell's a very competitive guy. And when you're a competitive guy, you love going on the road and shutting fans up and all that. But this is a fir- this is a different atmosphere as far as like the noise and all that. So how do you handle the noise? Not from a, oh, does it rattle you? But from a communication aspect, how are you going to handle that? And I think that's something to, to watch. It's something every co- young quarterback will go through. And I don't doubt that handle Howell can handle it well, but that's not my, that's the least of my concerns. My concern would be, that defense against this offensive protection. <clears throat> so Vance Joseph, the Broncos defensive coordinator, known for blitzing a lot. In the past, it's around 35 or so, 34% of the time his teams will blitz. They only blitzed 10 times on Sunday against the Raiders. So in talking to people here, they're, you know, first of all, Eric Bienemy knows Vance Joseph very well. He's it's one of his best friends and someone he's competed against quite a bit. So he has a good feel for what might happen and then how to adjust. So this is a good matchup for, for Washington in that regard that you have a coach, obviously Joseph knows bien too, but bien should be able to adjust. Okay, this is what he's showing early in the game. Then this is what he's probably going to do. And the commanders know that and talking to players, like they know that what, what they'll Joseph will show early on, the ten, the tone that he wants to set for the game with how he's going to call a call of plays. Will it be ultra aggressive and send a lot of blitzes or is he going to sit back and maybe do what he did last week, which is a lot of simulated pressures. So the Broncos did what a lot, what the Cardinals did against Washington. A lot of those, there were a lot of four man rushes for Denver. Again, only 10 blitzes, a lot of four man rushes, but you didn't always know which four were coming. So you're going to drop a guy, you're going to drop a lineman, you're going to blitz a linebacker or a corner or whatever. And that's what they did a lot of. So you have to be ready for that. Do you have confidence that this group is ready to handle that level of, of that kind of defense, that style? That's where, that's my biggest concern here. Cause I don't know. I mean, you have to, you know, last week they had some issues. It wasn't just the line. We've already gone through that, but that, pre- that protection encompasses everything. So there's a couple examples of that. And this, this comes back to how getting through the progressions not holding on the ball, having answers for him so we can get rid of the ball like that and get some quick throws in there to to offset some of what they're going to do. When I was watching the game with the Broncos and the Raiders, what I really noticed is there were a number of times that Jimmy Garoppolo, the Raiders quarterback, I think got them out of plays. And I I kind of owe it to his veteran savvy, right? Just he has seen a lot. So you he's gone through a lot. So there were pressures. I'm like, that could get to someone else. It didn't get to him because he knew to get rid of the ball now. There was one time where Garoppolo gets to his third read. There's a five-man pressure. He gets to his third read. It looks like his third read based on how I could try to kind of gauge the that where his eyes were going. But his third, let's say say his third read, it's it was he got rid of the ball in 2.7 seconds. That's really quick. If he doesn't get rid of it like that, it is a sack or or something worse, right? You know, or at least a sack. So, but that's, you know, and I saw a number of times where I felt like him being a veteran really helped offset what Denver was trying to do. Can Howell do that? You know, can the enemy call the game? Can they get in a situation where they, they, they can, off, you know, handle that level of pressure and just, and make adjustments that are necessary. To me, this is the number one key by far. And then it comes down to, you know, for how, 
the, the protection also receivers winning quickly. You have Patrick Sertan, you have Mass Mathis on the other side of the corner. Sertan, arguably the best corner. I had one player here tell me he was the best corner in the NFL. I'm certainly the best that this guy had seen. And so, you know, that's all, that's all a part of it. And, you know, so that, and the tight ends are going to have to help sometimes with some max protection or so you know, off of play action. So they're going to have to help in that too, or can, will Logan Thomas win a little bit quicker than, than last week and pre- present that big target in the red zone. I think that's one to watch as well. Denver does not have what I would consider a dynamic pass rusher, but they do they can't apply. In fact, they didn't have any sacks last week, but they did apply pressure and they're going to really test what Washington can do. You know, and again, I think you can look at the line and say, well, I say they, I think they were better than what people thought they were last week. They still got a lot to prove and this is going to be a big week for them. So, you know, they've, they've got to play better than they did last week. I'm not going to deny that at all. And they have to have a good game because if they don't, then it's going to be a long day for this offense. And then when you look at it, um, again, no sacks last week, veteran savvy, that all helps. And one of the guys I think they're going to really have to target in this area is the math is the other corner opposite Sertan. And, you know, I, if you Sertan did travel a lot with, with um, Devonte Adams last week. So there's a thought that he would travel with Terry McLaurin. One of the things that they, that, you know, Sertan is great. He's really good, really good, long, very, very good speed. So probably a more advanced Emmanuel Forbes in terms of some of his characteristics. Um, <clears throat> and that all helps him. But how is he hand, how is he going to handle some of the quicker, faster guys on some of these quick routes? That's going to be something to watch, but also math is can, and what they did with Adams last week too, there were sometimes they'd get him out, they'd have him outside. And he's going to be matched up against Sertan, but they'd also move him inside sometimes to the, to the, you know, um, move inside to like a number three position. So you got outside middle and then your slot and then your inside guy, get him away from Sertan. But then also you have dots in attacking Mathis. That's going to have to be a key. And I think he can do that. So that's definitely going to be something to watch there, but it all starts with handling the pressure. If they don't handle the pressure, they're not going to win. And if they do, if they turn it over because of this pressure, and this is my, my big fear in this one is, is an early mistake or two because of that pressure. And then do that. Does it put them in too much of a hole from which they can't recover? We'll see handle the pressure. The NFL is here, and it's all about the sweet offers from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can pocket $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code FIELDGOAL to sign up. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. NFL Sunday Ticket is now on YouTube and YouTube TV, which means that you can stay close to your team even if you don't live in their town. Like, maybe you're a Raven who married a Seahawk who got a job in the land of the Falcons. With NFL Sunday Ticket, you can watch your team's out-of-market Sunday afternoon games no matter where you live because you shouldn't have to change teams even if you change towns. NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. Go to youtube.com slash presale to get $50 off. Terms and embargoes apply. Offer ends 919. No refund. Subscription auto renews. Wait, are you gaming on a Chromebook? <laughs> yeah, it's got a high-res 120 hertz display, plus this killer RGB keyboard. And I can access thousands of games anytime, anywhere. Stop playing. What? Get out of here. Huh? Yeah, I want you to stop playing and get out of here so I can game on that Chromebook. Got it. Go ahead, break it down. Discover the ultimate cloud gaming machine, a new kind of Chromebook. Football is back in full swing with another week of epic games. And who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet $5 on football and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Nobody's missing out on the action this season. All DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. Get in on the NFL Week 2 action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code KIM, K-E-I-M, to sign up. New customers can bet just $5 and take home $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code KIM. The crown is yours. 
gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Apply. Number two, beware the legs. So that's just not about Russell Wilson running the ball. Wilson doesn't really run the ball a lot anymore, but he still can move. He's still mobile and he can still extend plays. So you have to beware of that. And then it's about the run game. But let's start with Wilson. And so he will run a lot of, they will run a lot of bootleg action. I felt like Washington did a pretty good job against the bootleg action last week with the ends getting in the face of Joshua Dobbs, making it hard for him to throw. But Russell Wilson is a little bit better than Joshua Dobbs. The one thing that helps Washington is they don't, the Broncos just don't have a lot of targets. Jerry Judy it does sound like he'll be back, but uh, also limited on his own snap count. What kind of impact will he have? Well, he's a playmaker. So that's going to be something to watch. And if you don't cover him, I don't care if he's had a hamstring injury or not, he's going to, he's going to make a big play. So you have, they have to be very mindful of that. That's the, that's the one guy that can really hurt you down the field right now because Denver really is focusing on a lot of quick, quick, quick passes. So the dominance of the D line last week in terms of the pressure numbers and all that, not sure we're going to see that again this week because of all that, but also again, you know, it, it's going to come back to it with the running quarterbacks for this team. It's always about lane discipline. You're going to sometimes break your, your lane, right? It's, you're going to try and get after the quarterback. Sometimes there's going to be a gap that opens and you just have to hope that he doesn't get through it, but you have to limit those situations because if you can, if he can extend the play now, he's really dangerous, obviously. And it's more so with his arm clearly at this point in his career than he is running the ball but it is a way to hurt them. So make sure those running, those pass rush lanes are condensed and you're in your lane. And the one thing that helps with this group is they're so familiar with one another. If one guy gets out of the gap, it's usually somebody else is able to replace them because they feel it. But you got to limit those times where you get that big outside rush. If somebody gets too far upfield and the tackle gets washed inside a little bit, then you're opening up a spot for Wilson to get through and make some plays. Denver will try to run the ball. This is where Washington is to really take control. Again, the legs, the legs of the run game. The inside, the interior for Denver, you have a center in, um, drawing a blank on his name, Lloyd Cushenberry, and did not look very good against the Raiders. Allen and Payne, that has to be a big concern for Denver. <clears throat> um, Cushenberry just got, he got knocked back a lot, missed guys. That's got to be a big concern for the Broncos. And so if they can stop that run and just make Denver a short passing team, you know, that's, that's going to help. And Denver last week, they had some long drives, but only 16 points. There's a missed field goal, missed extra point. So they could have gotten 20, but we're not talking an explosive offense at this point. So you really have to make sure that you, you keep, keep Wilson contained. And I think you'll be okay if you do. The other thing to watch for that too, is sometimes they'll run some tempo. You get a big play. They're going to hustle to the ball and maybe get a quick run and get it, get eight yards out of it. Cause they did that against the Raiders last week with running back Javante Williams, old uh, former Redskins, Samaj P Ryan is also now with the Broncos. Just thought I'd let you know. So the final thing is get B Rob going. And really that means the run game, but I'm going to talk about the style of runs you have to get in a minute. So Rivera talked a little bit about with, um, uh, Robinson not quite being there yet in in the enemy system and just still kind of working up to speed and you know some of that's going to be the vision the cuts whatever but I still would want to get him the ball get him a little bit more involved earlier than they did last week and the reason is because you need to stay ahead in the down and distance to offset some of that pressure right goes back to that first key so how do you you know and and how do you do that um the Raiders struggled running the ball with Josh Jacobs. Why? Well, when I when when you'd watch it, like they were anytime the Raiders went to a fullback and I formation, a couple of tight end sets, and tried to run the ball, the Broncos were all over it. In the in a seven man, when the Broncos had a seven man box, the Raiders averaged point zero 
0.9 yards per carry. And they ran out of that more often than not. 0.9 yards per carry. The line did a really good job. Like I like Zach Allen, the defense, the defensive lineman. I think he does a really nice job. He started, the more he played, the more plays he made and the more he was a disruptor. He wasn't always making a ton of plays, I should say, but he was disrupting plays because of it. Jonathan Cooper sets a really good edge on the outside. Now they're going to be, it sounds like they'll be without Frank Clark when they're, when they're pass rushers, but those two Clark, um, excuse me, um, Allen and then Cooper do a nice job in the run game, but so do their linebackers. And Alex Singleton was, every time I watch it, he's fr flying free to the ball, free to the ball, free to the ball. And so you have to limit that. But when the Raiders went, when the Raiders were able to get him to a six man box or less, and it wasn't enough. It was only like eight times. They averaged 5.3 yards per carry. So to me, a big key for this team is I don't know, you know, I don't think this is a line that's just going to power you, power you, power you at this point. So it's about creating a, and manipulating that box. And I feel like they did that at times last week against the Cardinals with some of that RPO action. And there were times where you get the linebackers just kind of pausing and waiting because they weren't sure that's what they need to do to the Broncos. Cause I saw that I saw the Raiders do some of that, or at least maybe with the box, if the, if they're thinking, if they're not sure if it's a run or pass, cause the formation, you got to make them think. And they, and, and too often the Raiders did not, they tried to overpower them and it just didn't work. So get them, get that box going. You, you know, use that RPO game. That's a big part here. And you know, the screen game, all that, but the RPOs, and just creating boxes that can you know, can limit how fast those linebackers can play. Leave them guessing just a little bit because that will make a big difference. Just get, you don't have to get these twenty yard runs, thirty yard, but you got to get those consistent four, five, six, seven yard runs. Get them early. Get out to a start, good start, and then you know withstand that pressure. So you know, they need to stay out of the negative situations. Anyways, those are the keys of the game. Now my prediction. Now I'm going to tell you about the prediction. First of all, I hate making them because I don't like, I don't, because they don't really matter to me. I don't sit there and want my prediction to be right or wrong or whatever. I just, I don't care. I don't tell you what my record is for a reason because I just don't care. But I do think it's, you know, for me, it's about like, you know, how does it, how do I think this game is going to go? And some people do wonder, what do you think? And I certainly think they can win this game. There are very few games I go into thinking, oh, they have no chance. You know, Dallas a couple of years ago on a day after Thanksgiving with all the COVID stuff, no chance. Otherwise, I think they all, there's always a chance that you can win any game. And I think certainly in this game, absolutely there's a chance. My concern is I don't think we know enough about how they're going to handle the pressure. And, you know, where is Hall at in his development in only his third start? He's going to get there. I don't, I don't worry about him in that regard, but is the protection plus where he is at enough to offset this that's the thing i'm not sure about and i will also say denver is also going to face a much it's going to face a better defense than they faced last week in the raiders that too is going to make a difference so you know but can you see sean payton going 0 two in his first two home games in denver i have a hard time with that i do you know i, I kind of like next week's matchup a little bit better to be honest against buffalo uh, but just from where, where Denver is strong and where these guys, I think, still have some questions. That's my big concern. That's why I'm going with the Broncos, but it's a 17-16 game. And I know they lost by, I know Denver lost by that last week, but really to me, this is a one point flip it up game. If Washington doesn't make mistakes that are killer mistakes, I'm talking the turnovers, they're going to win the game. And if they do, then it's going to be, then they'll be one and one. But I do, what, what I do like is the team's mindset. I do like the way this defense is looking. And, and I know, again, what Arizona has, but I like where this team is at. They have a shot. I just worry about handling that pressure. So anyway, that's it for me. I'll be back after the game Sunday talking about what happened, what went right, what went, what went wrong with, with the, the commanders, whatever happens, I'll be talking about it. Then on Tuesday morning, I'll be back with a film review of, of just some thoughts after rewatching the game and talking to some people on Monday so, and then Tuesday night, Bram Weinstein, the voice of commanders, and I with our live stream show on YouTube, 7.30 Eastern time. So, there you go. Talk to you next time.